Now we are looking for the right adapter for the logical rim dynamo. Here we have a bare frame. What we see here on the frame are the front brake sockets for V-brake or cantilever brake. They are always in the same place on the frame, in the back too, by the way. If the bike has brake sockets, we must definitely have the appropriate brake socket adapter. There is one for the left, which would then come in this position, would be attached here on this bike, the dynamo would sit about here. So, in cases where the bike has a hydraulic rim brake, we mostly find a lever on the brake which interferes with the installation of the dynamo. So, especially if you have a Magura hydraulic brake, forget the left holder and please opt for the brake socket holder on the right. And that's the same mirror inverted. The dynamo would sit like this. The brake socket holder on the right is also used on bikes much smaller than 26 inches. It has a slightly steeper tilt. Another interesting thing, you can mount the brake socket holder in each case also to the rear, but then on the other side respectively. That means the front right holder can also be mounted on the rear left. Also the other way around, of course. The holder at the front left, I'll do it again, you can also mount it at the rear right. It will always sit in the correct position towards the rim. Now to the cases where there are no brake sockets on the frame, but where we are dealing with bare tubes, blank tubes. Here is an example of a fork. First question, what tube shape do we have here? This is clearly an oval tube, I would say. Alternatively, there are also round tubes. At the height where the holder goes, we now measure the diameter. We see about 28 millimeters. We check the table and we see here we need the oval bracket 26 to 32 and that includes the 28 millimeters. So that would be this bracket then, and then there is also the matching holder for this bracket. The whole thing looks like this. Here's where the bracket would go, and here would come the holder, and here would be our dynamo. The dynamo would then sit approximately here in this place. In order to mount the Velogical Rim Dynamo on really each bicycle, each and every bicycle, there is a system construction kit of fastening elements. It is best to look at the table, which we will now show briefly. And on the table you can see it. We can equip both oval tubes and round tubes from a diameter of 10 millimeters to the largest diameter of 46 millimeters. And we have the right bracket for every shape and diameter range. This is what it looks like in reality. Here are the smallest stirrups, oval and round, next size, oval and round. And these sizes fit the small holder. Base holder small is the correct term. Then the next one. We just had this bracket in the example with the fork. It actually belongs here. Next size. Oval, round, oval, round. And they fit on the middle holder. And this middle holder, there is a left version and a right version. I'll hold them up here for a moment. There you can see symmetrically the mirrored actuation arrangement with the detents for folding and unfolding with the right holder. Here it goes exactly 
in the opposite direction, like this. And then just here for the very thick frame tubes, for instance for suspension forks, or for excessively large carbon parts, there are then here the extra sizes, again oval round, oval round, they fit the long holder. In general you can say most tubular steel frames have these sizes here. And as I said, here that one is for really thick suspension forks and for special carbon constructions. Aluminium frames are preferably in the middle range here, but it doesn't help. You have to determine the diameters in any case. You need to determine whether round or oval, check the table and then pick the appropriate bracket and matching holder. But this results rather clearly from the table. Now, the last thing to do, and that is to connect the lamp to the dynamo. Basically, only powerful LED headlights may be operated together with the logical rim dynamo. And, and that's just as important, between the lamp and the dynamo, this PTC thermistor is installed in the circuit. The PTC thermistor is basically a light bulb, a halogen light bulb. It has the following task. At low speeds, this bulb allows the current to flow unimpeded to the lamp. At high speeds, the filament in the bulb heats up and turns dark red or begins to glow slightly, creating a resistance that limits the dynamo's current. In this case, looping in means that by no means do we connect the two wires of the dynamo directly, but we connect only one wire. And then one wire from the dynamo is connected to one end of the PTC thermistor, and the other end of the PTC thermistor is connected to the lamp. Now you can see rather clearly the PTC thermistor is integrated into circuit. So now the practical advice on how to connect these wires permanently and above all waterproof and contact safe with each other. To do this, let's start by insulating the cables over a length of 12 millimeters. Here we go, this has the 12 millimeters. We put a piece of heat shrink tubing on one side, like this. Then we put the cables exactly neatly next to each other and now we twist them properly. That's it. The twisting is folded over in the direction of the thinner cable. Then the heat shrink tube is pushed over it. This is done in such a way that it covers both cables over approximately the same length. And then the flamethrower. Now the heat shrink tubing is shrunk until it fits tightly against the cable. The same can be done with the hot air gun or with a hairdryer if necessary you can do it with a lighter. But then you have to be very careful not to burn the tube and the cables. Now we have a permanent waterproof connection between the two wires. Same thing goes for the other edges, of course. When you have the two cables connected like this, you really have a reliable, very reliable contact and a waterproof solution for decades to come, better than any plug. And in addition, you can just you can adjust the cable length to the bike. To release the connection, you just have to pull. Now we have the two parts, you have to pull hard. Maybe one last remark, of course the PTC resistor 
must also be attached to the bike. That's why you clip it to the brake assembly cable. Then it stays there in place and is well kept. Finally, the function test. This time not on the bike itself, but on the tabletop. We roll the dynamo briefly over the tabletop here. Finally, an explanation for the connection of the tail light. Usually, you would find the outputs for the tail light here on the LED headlights. That's the normal way to connect them. Dynamo goes to the lamp. From the lamp, it goes back to the tail light. In between is, of course, here in our case, the Velogical Dynamo and the PTC resistor. So in cases where you mount the dynamo on the rear wheel, you would now theoretically have to lay a line from the dynamo to the lamp and from the lamp a line back to the rear light. If you want to skip that step, you can also connect the rear light directly in parallel to the lamp. So here at the two lamps, the PTC thermistor must always be connected directly to the dynamo. So here you can bridge here directly towards the tail light. Um, you can create a branch. However, this only works if the lamp is permanently switched on or if it has no switch at all, because it's in the lamp where the voltage limitation takes place. And what you need to avoid by all means is that one shuts off the rear light of here, this bridging directly, and then operate a dynamo with the switched off lamp, because this would result in the tail light getting too much voltage and possibly burning out, which, by the way, has always been the case when front lights do not work, because this is when tail lights always break very quickly.